Ralph Glidden has a rather interesting story to tell. A story which he continued to tell from the grave. While digging on Catalina Island in the Gulf of California between 1919 and 1928, he found, according to him and numerous newspaper articles from the time, numerous skeletons. But what made his claims particularly interesting, however, was the claim that their average height was around 7 to 9 feet. The question arrived at by all those who have heavily researched his story is, where are these skeletons today? Could it really have just been a publicity stunt? Or did Glidden actually somehow find the remains of a lost race of giants? Santa Catalina Island, also just known as Catalina Island, is one of the Channel Islands off the coast of California in USA. The Channel Islands holds the title as the location of the earliest evidence for seafaring in the Americas, and also the earliest evidence of humans in North America. Ralph Glidden, who worked on the islands for several decades, was an amateur archaeologist who successfully uncovered ancient burial sites on Catalina Island. From 1919 to 1928, it is said that he excavated more than 800 grave sites from about 100 individual locations around the island. In addition to finding thousands of artifacts, he also stated that he dug up almost 4,000 human skeletons, a claim which has often received a lot of negative attention, many claiming he lacked respect for the dead. However, his reasoning was quite profound. He claimed that there once lived an advanced ancient race of tall, fair-haired Indians on Catalina Island and the adjacent islands. With the male adults around 7 feet in height, Glidden lost his sponsor after digging for almost 10 years, and the general opinion today is that he was just bluffing about finding giant skeletons, with the motive of creating interest and making money. However, he never made much money from his finds and received little financial attention. Additionally, Ralph Glidden was not the first to find a giant skeleton on Catalina Island. According to Pittsburgh Press, July 20, 1913, and also the Daily Telegraph on July 26, a German naturalist named Dr. A. W. Furstenon uncovered an 8-foot skeleton on the island. The skeleton was found with artifacts such as mortars, pestles, and arrowheads, all different from the ordinary Indian burials, plus a strange flat stone bearing unknown symbols. Furstenan had, while in Mexico, heard the legend regarding the noble race of giants that had once lived on Catalina Island, long before the white man had arrived. He would find the skeleton along Avalon Bay, in black hard sand, yet, alas, the remains have since vanished. All over the islands, there are countless reports. According to several newspaper articles, Santa Rosa Island was the site of a dig in 1959, where they discovered several skeletons more than 7 feet tall. The tops of the skulls were painted red, and the skulls were described as having sloped foreheads. On San Nicolas Island west of Catalina in 1897, a party of relic hunters stayed three weeks on the barren island, and Newark Daily Advocate would subsequently tell of them finding bones of a giant race on San Nicolas Island. Whether these bones finally made it into private collections is unknown. In 1930, Glidden was ready to sell his collection, including his whole series of secrets regarding the island. In return, he requested an annual annuity for life, funding for five expeditions, and the necessary financing for various planned publications that included a large monograph chronicling all of his excavations. But it seems, sadly, regardless of Glidden's confidence, nobody wanted to buy his miraculous finds, and in 1962, at the age of 81 years old, he sold his collection for a mere $5,000. Just six years later, Glidden died. However, in March 2012, an unlabeled box was discovered resting deep within the Catalina Island Museum archives. In this box was Glidden's collection of secret records, among which was, most importantly, a series of unique photographs showing Ralph Glidden indeed excavating one of his authentic, giant, and very ancient skeletons. There are many ancient relics strewn across our planet, which are unimaginably ancient. Hidden from inquisitive minds, often by a variety of factors, millennia of undergrowth, conspiratorial bodies, or even personal perceptions of historical truth. 
However, there lay a far more interesting, far more inspiring tale, resting just beneath the surface of this illusion, just waiting to flourish. Previously, we covered some of the amazing discoveries made by a man known as Professor Potini. In particular, his extremely peculiar stone found in 1990 within a diamond mine in Sierra Leone within West Africa. It is known as the Sky Stone. Numerous specialists have analyzed the stone and concluded that it is somehow made of pure oxygen, with a color source which is, as yet, unknown. Unbeknownst to many, however, is that Professor Angelo Pitoni had many strings to his bow. He was a geologist, a botanist, discoverer of emerald mines, an expert in the precious stone lapis lazuli, along with many other talents. And although many perceive his sky stone as a defining discovery, we feel his actual defining discovery, his legacy left upon the unexplained mystery history of our planet, can be found elsewhere. He did in fact, during his lifetime of exploration, indeed discover something unique upon our planet. Something undoubtedly important, immensely ancient, and quite possibly, a last remaining remnant of an unimaginably old civilization which was once found upon the African continent. Found during his ventures deep within Sierra Leone, West Africa. The Lady of Mali. He examined the land at the foot of her mountainous form, and according to his calculations, the stone monument was indeed man-made and carved well over 12,000 years ago. Reaching an astonishing 1,500 meters in the air, it is an image of a woman's figure hewn from an entire face of Mount Lore. Predictably, due to modern academia and the entrenched, paradynamically cast spell, Upon many modern fields of study, the only explanation that can be ascertained for this clearly man-made, highly ancient artwork is that it is merely a coincidental, natural formation. In an interview with journalist Carmen Mikado, Pitoni explained that the statue is located to the north of the city of Conakry and close to the country's border with Mali. The geologist estimates the Lady of Mali to be some 20,000 years old. This concluded through the observations of displaced motions within a natural rock fault he found within the lady's form. He also spoke of caves in the area, which contained mummies, guarded by the locals, who he claimed rumored of their, quote, Atlantean origins. Unfortunately, Professor Potini died in 2009, so any other invaluable information he may have acquired regarding the area went to the grave with him. However, the Lady of Mali remains and will undoubtedly live on for many years to come. Just who could have built the Lady of Mali? Is she really a 12,000-year-old relic, left by a pre-flood, pre-cataclysmic civilization, or merely a natural formation? Do you believe an opinion based on a historical assumption? Or one based upon explorations, investigations, resulting in unexplained physical artifacts. We will let you decide.